Can you imagine trying to maintain a long-distance relationship almost 7,000 miles apart? You might find the idea a little intimidating, especially if you didn't have access to modern transportation or technology. However, China and Africa did not see the distance as a significant detriment. While they have grown closer in contemporary history, they have a fascinating shared history going back over 2,000 years. They traded and engaged in diplomacy long before airplanes or the internet existed and their dedication continues to fuel the China-Africa relationship today. China has a rich history and culture, dating back to prehistoric times, creating a heritage that has impacted the world. Their influence is most evident in other Asian countries where the Chinese practice sinification, the spread of Chinese culture over traditional ways of life. Recently, many of those people groups have reclaimed their ancient practices, even if their lives will never be the same. However, China's influence has reached far beyond the Asian continent. They also spread their discoveries across the globe, giving us items like rice, silk, gunpowder, and fireworks. While it may be easier to see China's influence in the Western world, China also has relationships with Africa. It is centuries old and reminds us that our economic, political, and social issues are part of the global community, allowing us to be interconnected. What was the historical China-Africa relationship based on? Some of the earliest interactions between China and Africa came via the Silk Road, a series of trade routes connecting China to the West. While parts of the trade route have been used as the Persian Royal Road for centuries, the Silk Road began around 130 BCE during the Han Dynasty and the Golden Age of Ancient China. Emperor Wu was concerned for his people and wanted to stimulate the economy. Most people are more familiar with Europe's interactions with the Silk Road. The Romans highly prized silk making it one of the most valuable items in their empire. It was so popular, it even became part of politics, but criticism could not stop the demand. The Chinese invented a loom to make patterned cloth for trade to meet this demand, and closely guarded the secrets of harvesting and spinning silk. The Silk Road permanently changed world history by encouraging people to exchange goods and ideas in a new way. Of course, exchanging inventions like gunpowder and medicines and precious items like gold and horses changed the development of all countries involved. For instance, the Europeans bred horses, which the Chinese were eager to acquire to aid their conquest efforts. More important than trade or war, the Silk Road also facilitated cultural exchanges. The merchants who traveled their portions of the trade route shared art, philosophy, and science, much of which continues to shape the international community today. When the Silk Road finally closed in 1453 with the fall of the Byzantine Empire, the Europeans launched into the Age of Exploration, intent on reaching China once again to trade. The world was about to get even bigger. However, Europe and China were not the only Silk Road trade route participants. Many Western goods, such as gold and timber, actually came from Africa, not Europe, and trade was an essential part of ancient and medieval Africa. Their kingdoms created strong economies and developed complex cultures because of their connection to the Silk Road. Africa built trade networks within their own continent, such as the Trans-Sahara Trade Route, to facilitate trade which brought in Arab and Christian merchants, spreading new religions across the continent. As a result, much of Africa converted to Islam and Christianity, and some kingdoms acquired vast wealth. Medieval Africa was full of innovations and social changes proving their work with the Silk Road was monumental for their development. Of course, Africa also influenced international developments through trade. Aside from India, it was one of the leading spice suppliers. While some of them, like wild silphion, are now extinct, and some, like grains of paradise, are no longer common in Western cuisine, other spices made such a monumental impact that it is difficult to imagine the world today without them. One of those spices is sesame. You may think of sesame seeds as distinctly Asian, since they are used in numerous popular Chinese dishes. You may think of tahini, or sesame paste, as Middle Eastern or Central Asian. However, the sesame plant was very common in Africa. Through the Silk Road, Africa and China had an indirect relationship for hundreds of years, but they did not formalize it until 1071 CE, when an embassy from East Africa arrived in China during the Song Dynasty. The Chinese recorded the African kingdom was called Sang Tong. It minted its own coins and was primarily located inland, but historians still debate which African country this was. 
Trade continued to be a critical part of the historic China-Africa relationship, especially after they established personal connections. One of the most famous trade ventures between the two powers was headed by Zhang He, a Chinese admiral from the Ming Dynasty. He was interested in exploring the world, so with the emperor's approval, he set out in the early 1400s to explore, traveling across the Indian Ocean and reaching as far as Africa. Zhang He brought treasures to give foreign governments, which he met and occasionally meddled with over the years. He also invited local leaders to visit China, spreading Chinese culture and impressing people with its power. In exchange for Chinese gifts and Ming titles, he received things like spices, medicines, and live animals, such as giraffes and zebras from the East Africans. Of course, Zhang He's expedition was not the first time Africa had hosted Chinese ships, although it was one of the most impressive displays. Chinese trading vessels have been stopping in African ports since at least the 12th century, and archaeologists have found Chinese artifacts across Africa. These include treasures like Chinese coins, mainly from the Song Dynasty, although there are some from the Ming and Qing Dynasties, glass beads, and even porcelain. These two prominent entities enjoyed a respectable trading relationship. However, their connections deepened as some Chinese sailors settled in Africa. According to one story, Chinese vessels occasionally sank near the coast of Kenya. Instead of traveling back to China, some surviving sailors settled in the land, converting to Islam, and left their cultural mark on the area. South Africa has similar communities, proving the China-Africa relationship was more complex than trade. People immigrated to Africa, bringing the continent even closer to China and making Africa an area of interest to the changing Chinese dynasties. Although China became increasingly isolationist after the Ming Dynasty, its relationship with Africa has not ceased in the modern age. Instead, it is colored by their ancient ties and plays a part in current international relations. What is the basis for the contemporary China-Africa relationship? The modern China-Africa relationship started in the late 1950s when China began offering political, economic, and military assistance to African countries wanting their freedom. Colonialism had damaged Africa. The age of exploration led Western European powers like Britain, France, and Spain to take over lands across the globe and exploit them for their own uses. Africa was not only exploited for its natural resources, but also for its people. The trade of enslaved people bred conflict on the continent and destroyed people's lives, even though several African kingdoms saw monetary benefits. By the time World War II ended, Africa was moving into the modern era and many African countries joined the United Nations. The African independence movements sprang up in countries like Kenya, Algeria, and Mozambique after the war. The Chinese openly supported African independence from Western powers. They also used diplomacy to support non-communist political initiatives, like the Pan-Africanist Congress. This group has now become a political party in South Africa. Although some of China's political relationships with Africa has involved diplomacy, a significant portion of it includes military assistance. During the Cold War, China focused its military cooperation on helping African countries gain their independence and opposing the Soviet Union. Their contribution included selling military equipment to African countries and providing military training for select independence fighters. China continues to sell weapons and other equipment to Africa today. Sales have increased recently, making China one of Africa's top suppliers. However, China offers more military support than supplying weaponry. They also have begun launching peacekeeping missions, sending troops to several countries in the 21st century. In 2017, they built their first overseas base in the Republic of Djibouti. They intended for the base to assist these peacekeeping missions by coordinating logistics. Of course, trade continues to be a critical part of their current relationship, although some critics state China is taking advantage of the continent. Trade has rapidly increased since the 1990s. Africa trades raw materials like oil, mineral ore, and agricultural products in exchange for manufactured items from China, such as clothing, machinery, and technology. A significant part of China's economic relationship with Africa includes infrastructure investments like banking and energy production. They work with certain African countries to improve road, port, and rail line conditions, improving trade opportunities. However, some argue China is exploiting weak governments whenever they step in, promoting inadvisable decision-making. China is much more willing to interfere with African internal affairs in their contemporary relationship than they appear to have been historically. 
Loans and aid have been part of the China-Africa relationship since the 1960s, starting with healthcare and the African independence movements. Their healthcare assistance has focused on medical developments, monetary support, and personnel who have served in over 47 African countries. China has devoted billions of dollars to helping Africa build vital medical centers and fight epidemics like AIDS and Ebola. Foreign aid between China and Africa extends further than healthcare. It is also critical to China's diplomacy with the continent. Supporting the African independence movements included more than military assistance. Thus, the Chinese also financed infrastructure projects, building public transit systems like the Tazara Railway. This rail line links Tanzania and Zambia in East Africa, helping support trade in the area in the late 1900s, although the rail line's popularity has since declined. Another critical way China has assisted Africa is by offering low-interest loans and grants without political or moral requirements, unlike many Western loans, which makes them more popular in Africa. Most of these loans are used by developing countries to improve their infrastructure, giving them better water, electrical, communication, and transportation opportunities. These loans have helped improve social and economic issues across the continent. In addition, China has forgiven billions of dollars of African debt, although experts are still determining exactly how much they have forgiven so far. China still holds a significant amount of Africa's debt. Some experts fear China is using debt trap diplomacy to force African countries to share their natural resources through contemporary colonization. Still, others believe this idea is an exaggeration of the China-Africa relationship. Overall, Africa and China have had a long and complex history spanning over 2,000 years. They have influenced each other directly and indirectly, shaping global history through their trade networks and bids for political power. While some people may view the China-Africa relationship as a minor part of international politics, it has shaped the world. Their cooperation can be seen today through things like sesame seeds, gold, and the ongoing concerns for healthcare in the recent pandemic. Their relationship reminds us that we are all interconnected, no matter how many miles may separate us. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about China, check out our book, History of China, a captivating guide to Chinese history, including events such as the First Emperor of China, the Mongol conquests of Genghis Khan, the Opium Wars, and the Cultural Revolution. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.